My name is Carmen Dix. I'm the art director on the T-Human project for the Xbox 360. As art director, I've given a story, a content, mm -hmm. rich story in fact, based on Norse mythology, which is you know, really a good place to start. Mm -hmm. At least you know if it's myth that's passed down throughout the history you know, of man, then you know it's something that's got a rich foundation in which to start. Just like Lord of the Rings, loosely based on Norse myth as well. So, uh, But with that rich story, we want to make sure that we have something that can be divided up to a certain amount of gameplay and take the player kind of on a journey like a, like a film from, from start to finish and gradually have that build up so that it seems like you're traversing a very, very vast world and in order to kind of encapsulate the epic nature of, of to human itself. I mean, it is a trilogy and mm -hmm. this, is, this is a story in itself, but it is a story that's part of the trilogy. It's not the easiest thing to come up with something that's a, a Viking high-tech mix. You want to kind of imply that, of course, there is a Viking heritage, and yet at the same time, it is a futuristic world. But I mean, the player should intuitively know that you know, this is where the race began. These are where these people are from. So it's a, a bit of a marriage, because we do want to have a nice, rich contrast. I mean, as I said before, it's, a, it's an epic game. And by that, I mean we have the, the you know, basic worlds, as you would expect, with the technology. But we also have the realm of almost organics, which is cyberspace. So all of a sudden you have these rich, lush lands of, of trees and, and water. So it's a nice little contrast there, just to provide as much variety as possible. Well, in, in truth, I think everyone knows Thor <laughs> at some point in time. Some people might even know Odin. But as for the lesser gods, if you would say that, uh, Balder, for example, uh, Freya and Bragi, and I mean, I had no idea just what a rich history there was. Um, it was kind of nice to actually play upon that. I mean, here you have kind of the basic foundation for it. Now, how do we present this in, in something that would be an action gameplay, an epic story that would just totally encapture you know, people to want to play more, learn more, and you know, actually look up Norse mythology to find out what the character is all about. In many ways, it, it goes from just the uh, uh, like a cursory level where the average game, you know, game player is going to pick it up and start running through and not really notice things. For example, one of the worlds we have, it's uh, you see little elements of Viking kind of technology. Mm -hmm. It's not in your face. It's certainly something you start to see little bits of it at the very beginning. But as you go towards the end of the level, uh, the basic gamers are going to run through just playing things, you know, playing and fighting and battling. And anyone taking a little bit further up, maybe a little bit more highbrow, would actually notice that all of a sudden these pieces are fitting together. And the little bit that you saw at the beginning is actually, oh, I see how it comes together. Now it makes sense. So there's a little bit for everybody. I mean, if you just want to get in and just beat the hell out of all the machines, then you have that option. Mm -hmm. And if you want to go through and kind of have a little bit of a, take away a little bit more, there's, there's that rich environment, you can actually do that. Cyberspace is kind of our way of, of always balancing the rich organic world with, with traditional you know, tech gameplay. It's kind of a cross between you know, taking the Terminator and mixing it with Lord of the Rings. You just want to make sure that you have this huge story with a mix of both machine and the rich story of something like the Lord of the Rings, where you have the Land of the Dark Elves and the Trolls and so on. Uh, the actual style, that the look of it, I mean, a lot of it, as Des was saying earlier, is coming directly from the motion capture experts. I mean, we'd love to be able to keyframe this wonderful stuff, but the truth is that we're going for realism at all times. And we want to make sure that the player, when he's actually in, or he, she's actually in the game, uh, you, you're totally immersed. You don't realize that, okay, through the cameras, you're not being pulled out, you're in the flow of it. And that means that you're trying to be as realistic and show as much realism as possible. And with that, that also goes back into the gameplay. I mean, who can capture you know, all the martial arts moves and all the wonderful gameplay aspects of battle more than the experts themselves? Mm -hmm. So we'd love to be able to keyframe that stuff, but quite frankly, we couldn't in our you know, greatest dreams kind of figure out how things would actually flow together. Mm -hmm. It's a different story when you actually get the experts to motion capture, it, mm -hmm. and then you can see that whoo, whoo, flipping around there that so smooth, so, so fluid. It is a story that is purposely done as a trilogy. Mm -hmm. It's not, for example, you know, something like The Matrix, where, well, by the way, we'll add another one. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, it's, it's more akin to Lord of the Rings, where they purposely went out and made three movies at the same time. So the story, I mean, you did get enough balance that the, that the viewer did enjoy the first movie, and they felt satisfied that, okay, we have an ending here. And yet, at the same time, you know the story continues. Mm -hmm. 
So, and there's certainly a lot of twists and turns that uh, first game versus the last game that the player should be very happy. I think at the end of the day I'd like to have someone who's playing a game but is so immersed that in many ways they feel like they're actually playing a film as, as opposed to a game. And in many respects I'd rather compete with movies than games as far as visual quality and immersing the viewer. So that's really where I want to take people. And I hope that uh, through the visual identity and the whole continuity, I mean, running through from beginning to end here, the player feels satisfied and yet realism to the point where he's totally immersed into the game. Quite frankly, we've been working on this project, you know, even in story form for quite some time, mm -hmm. but it's only now that we actually have the technology through the Xbox 360 to start putting it into practice. and to actually show the level of realism, show the level of lighting, show the level of characters, get all the characters. I mean, we're talking about so many enemies on a screen at any given time, you just saw a taste of it there, but uh, the epic nature of this whole thing is something that you wouldn't be able to do until most recently with the technology of the three, uh, 360. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're pretty relieved, and I'm sure that anyone playing is going to be more than happy. <laughs>